Well, aren't you beautifully disgusting? All right, and welcome back to the channel, everybody, and I hope you're doing fine. Finally, we can talk about the Stalker Beetle. Then the usual disclaimer, keep in mind, this is from the test server. This is not a released feature yet. So if you have any feedback or if you want to have a discussion, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Today, we're going to talk about hard facts. Also, we're going to talk about how to fly the thing and how to control it. Then Beetle Combat. No, that's not a cheap sequel from Mortal Combat. Also, we have... A chapter where we talk about how to counter the thing. And at the end, I want to share my thoughts, have a little bit of a discussion here. You know, there are quite some opportunities that you can have now with the Stalker Beetle, but I also want to share one or two concerns. All right, let's go. Okay, probably the shortest chapter here. We're going to talk about the hard facts from the Stalker Beetle. First of all, it's a new flying character. Yeah, I know you probably guessed it already. A beetle that can fly, I know it's amazing. You control it by player first person. You activate it like a regular consumable. So you toss it and the moment the beetle hits something, you swap perspective and you fly that thing. The activation timer is really short. So you can also just toss it straight up and it will activate mid-air. It is a very early unlock, bloodline level 15. Again, that's how it currently works at the point where I recorded this video and it costs 45 bucks so more on the cheaper side the downside is it's a single use item so if you lose it or it gets destroyed then well maybe you brought a second one or you find them in the world because they can be found in these cocoons and these cocoons are on bigger trees i think there's like around three maybe five fixed spawns on each map where you can find these little buggers. Always rule of two, so there will always be a pair, but you can also find them at the wall of a house. Didn't find one there yet, but these cocoons, they look pretty awesome. All right, next, we're gonna talk about flying and controlling. Flying that thing is pretty straightforward. I think the jump pod key is for up and crouch is for down, but there's multiple settings how you can fly that thing. So jump into your settings menu and check out how it works exactly. Now, the flying, you only have the dark side vision because otherwise this thing would be OP because you can fly pretty high and then you would see the whole map and see all the movement. It is a little bit of an improved dark side vision, so you see a little bit further than a hunter with dark side, but it's still very limiting. Especially when you're looking for targets that are not moving or if it's nighttime, a little bit of a challenge, but that's a balanced thing. Now, the flying might feel a little bit weird. You can see here my very first flight attempt in the background and I bump into a lot of objects. The beetle has quite some inertia. So there's a little bit of a drag or a little bit of a delayed feedback regarding this. So if you tap your forward key, the beetle will go forward and you release the forward key, the beetle will still go maybe a little bit slower forward. So hovering that thing actually in a specific point is not that easy. Also, that thing is pretty loud, so the audio will always reveal the beetle. The intensity of this buzzing sound is linked to how fast your beetle is going. So if it's stationary, it's rather quiet, but if you're going full speed, then it's, well, I don't want to say very loud, but it makes it easier to detect. Then we also have a little bit of an issue here with our beetle because our body is kind of on the weaker side. I don't know the exact amount of hitch points. Hitch points? Yeah, hitch points. But it's super low. I think he has one. Like that thing touches wire, it dies. You get too close to a hive, it gets poisoned, it dies. You try to toss a sticky bomb on it. Yeah, of course I tried that. It dies. I wonder why they did that. Well, it can't possibly have anything to do with your videos, am I right? Stick a bomb at the extractions or the other shit? Fair enough. You can fly the thing 150 meters away from your hunter. You can see that down the background how far it actually is. Because I personally think that there are still a lot of people who don't really have a good feeling about how far distances in Hunt Showdown actually are. The moment you hit these 150 meters, it's going to be a countdown. The moment the countdown hits zero, because you're not flying back into the zone, 
where you can control the beetle, it drops to the floor. So it's not getting destroyed. Anybody who finds the beetle can pick it up, which is also pretty cool because that means you can actually trade with other people a consumable. Something that I hope we can get for maybe all consumables. You know, you run low of heals, but you still have a bit shot, drop it for your teammate. You found a frag bomb, you hate frag bombs, your teammate lost frag bombs, drop a frag bomb for them. I think this is a nice feature. Now, you have to be careful because your hunter is in a stasis. So, you can't do anything. You better find the thickest bush on the map from where you started, Beetle. And you can be very unfortunate. Let's, let's put it that way. People might see you toss the beetle. Right? So if I see suddenly a beetle above a bush and I see the beetle going south, well, I guess I will find you rather quickly. So there are some drawbacks, which might be kind of challenging for solo play. But this is then for at the end where we have our discussion topic. Now, let's talk about beetle combat. Now, combat is maybe a little bit of a stretch because that thing, well, it can't really attack with, you know, uh, left click or right click and then it's using its mandibles and claws to bite you, but it can explode. <clears throat> yeah, it deals five damage. Not that much, but uh, I can't wait for the memes to get sparks and then like an army of beetles is following you or, you know, you get beetle first and then sparks uh this will be interesting let's, let's put it that way you're also poisoned when it explodes in your face for i think up to 10 seconds and you get medium bleed because why not the explosion interacts with the environment so you can trigger traps with that like concertina traps in water you can trigger alert trip mines right next to red barrels which might be also a cool mind game right place an alert trip mine at a red barrel Use the bug, blow it up, people think somebody died, they check it out. Who knows? Uh, lanterns and cranks, so you can destroy like the lanterns above uh, chicken coops or dog kennels. Cranks to close doors again. The window shutters and barricaded doors, you're not destroying them. I don't think the beetle is strong enough for that, but you can open it. So if the beetle is inside of a building, it explodes, it opens the window shutters or destroys um, the barricade at the barricaded doors so you can open the doors again, which is kind of neat It deals also enough damage to kill certain monsters such as hive hellhounds and grunts. I mean, yeah Okay, that that is cool, but They are so rare and I think you can do so much more that this is maybe just a neat little detail and that's it Trades work with it so you have Traits that work on dark side, like Vigilant, that's the one to see traps, Poison Sense, that's to see poison players, and Blades here to find, you know, bolts, arrows, throwing axes, throwing knives. That is really cool. Like, Poison Sense and Blades here is whatever, but Vigilant? So, you're outside of a compound, you toss the beetle, you have Vigilant, you fly through the whole compound from above, you see all the traps, and it's an insane insane scouting tool um the beetle can ping for the partner so yeah that oh uh, my god really they're doing this now oh this is so rainbow sex oh this is gonna absolutely break the game dude people will just sweat outside with the long ammo they ping the goddamn newbies and then just go bang wall bang headshot bang wall bang headshot it's gonna be super unbalanced this will not be fun at all oh my god i'm just dying again uh, is this not the point where you try to interrupt me normally? Uh, no? Okay, alright, okay, I mean, sure, alright, I uh, guess we talk about this later. So, yeah, you better keep moving because if there's a sparks outside together with a teammate that is controlling the beetle and the beetle is pinging you non-stop, you don't want to hold still. Especially in a few boss layers. Well, that's now maybe an extreme case, but they're in shipyard. That thing is, I think 99.9% .9 made out of wood. So Sparks FMJ, yes, I just said Sparks FMJ, will go through the whole thing. And well, there is no ceiling. So the buck can be on top, 
spot the inside, ping for the sparks outside, and then, yeah, sparks comes with a lot of ammo. So you better spot that beetle fast, or you better don't stop moving. I mean, after one or two pretty close warbangs, you probably know what's going on there. We're going to talk about that at the end. Another thing that we will definitely discuss at the end is proximity warnings. The beetle works the same way as a player model when we talk about these proximity warnings. So if you're taking a clue, it turns red, that can be a beetle now, not just a player. If you're going to the extraction, the extraction goes off, that can be a beetle. If you are trying to extract and suddenly the extraction is blocked, that can be a beetle. <clears throat> so yeah, keep in mind, test server, jump on the test server, try everything out and give Crytek feedback. Feedback. That is not going on a Steam forum and bitching non-stop. That is not feedback. All right. All right. So this is it regarding Beetle Combat. We're going to discuss a few things in a moment. Let's jump to the next chapter though for now. Okay. Let's make this short. So the Beetle, it dies to everything. You just shoot it, you smack it, you punch it. Also, when it gets destroyed, it does not blow up. I think this is very important because I said at the beginning that it can explode. But this only happens, this explosion only happens when it's triggered by the guy controlling the beetle. If you just smack it with a, I don't know, with a Martini Henry repose with the melee attack, nothing has happened. Choke clouds also disarm the beetle so it will drop on the floor. That is actually kind of cool. So if the other team is not careful and drop a choke bomb on the beetle, you pick up their beetle, use their beetle to scout them. Again, I think the beetle will be either very useless or have massive impact. Right now, I think it's more the second one. Also, the beetle gets disarmed when you touch water. But Mike, you said you can set off traps that are in water. Yes, the traps are in the water. The beetle flies above the water surface, explodes, and then triggers the traps that are in the water. I mean, that will have almost no use cases. But just for the sake of completion, I want to mention it. Also, the moment you damage the controlling player, he loses control of it. I mean, you either damage him or you kill him. All right. Then, well, that's actually it. You just shoot it, choke bomb it, or attack the guy controlling the, the beetle. Well, if you see the guy who controls the beetle, you just go up there and toss a Constantina bomb on his ass just to have a little bit of fun there. <laughs> All right. Next chapter. Okay, I have a feeling this will be the longest chapter of this video and you know me, I like to talk and of course I like to listen to myself and blah blah blah. I mean, you know the comments by now. Yeah, let's talk about opportunities first. So, I personally don't think the beetle is actually an anti-camping mechanic because that's how they advertise this beetle. It can be used as that, but in my personal opinion, this is a scouting tool. It's a feature to scout. I think it's really strong. You probably, especially at the beginning when people don't know how to counter the beetle or they just don't pay attention for this. Lots of times when you push a boss layer, they melee it and you're lacking the intel. What are they actually playing? Do they have shotguns or do they have something else? Because if I play a shotgun and I know the people inside do not have shotguns, oh yeah, here I come, here I push, right? If I play I don't know, a label, and I know the guys inside play shotguns with slugs. Okay, you don't know if they're slugs or not, but you get my point. And I might not push in there. So you can use this to get us some very useful intel. But at the end of the day, if the guys inside don't want to move, well, not much changed, right? By the way, I always say it, but I'm going to say it once more just to annoy you guys. The people outside can camp too. It's not always the people in the boss layer not coming out. It's also the people outside not coming in. They're doing basically the same thing, just in a different location. So yeah, I think it's more for scouting and also for disarming strongholds. You see traps everywhere. You can trigger that with the beep door. You can see barricaded doors. You just blow them up and stuff like that. This will have some use case. Will this be strong enough to pick it? Not really. The scouting, yes. For the scouting, I think this is really, really cool. But for disarming strongholds, yeah. Can work, but will not be the main thing why you pick that. Bait and destruction. Destruction? Destruction, sorry. 
yeah, I mean the beetle triggers all the AI, but it can't be attacked by AI. Sure, if you fly too close to a hive, it gets destroyed by the poison aura of the hive. But you can fly to the next compound, trigger all the AI there, make it look like, oh yeah, there's a lot of people, but there's nobody there. This will be this will be super interesting. You get basically a chaos bomb for AI triggers. I'm pretty sure that you can do a lot with that. Now there's a lot of gimmicks that that do not work. Like for example, there are sticky bombs in the water, and you want to blow them up with the beetle. Sticky bombs just disappear, or you can toss a sticky bomb on the beetle and then fly with the beetle inside the boss lair and blow everybody up. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But yeah. There's definitely more use cases. I just want to mention a couple ones. Now, let's jump to the concerns though, because... Well, that will be interesting. I mentioned it already. This is not an anti-camping feature i think this is more a, a scouting feature or a nice synchronized attack feature because the i'm a little bit scared maybe not in the lower brackets but in the higher brackets this will absolutely happen in a few boss layers where the beetle will be hard to find because you have actually good vision into the boss layer because you have to keep in mind that thing doesn't come in through doors or windows i mean yes it can but it can come through cracks too, and through holes in the walls. So, for example, Devon Ranch, you have lots of holes in the top of the roof. I mean, top of the roof, in the roof, okay? And it's flying very high and can look through these cracks, and it might be just high enough that you don't hear the thing buzzing around. It will also be pretty difficult to hit the thing there, if you don't know that it's there. And then they ping through these cracks, on players sitting at a wall and that thing is basically made of wood and the teammates can't just wall bang. <laughs> um, sure there are a few compounds where this will be borderline useless especially when the boss layer is underground but still I'm a little bit I personally think the ping might need some limitation so either you can't ping super accurately with the beetle because right now you can it's like surgical precision where you ping or make it a limited that you can only ping once every 30 seconds or something like that maybe i overreact here but people go for crazy amount of wall banks already in the moment they might have a teammate that pings for them I mean, now you can, of course, argue, yeah, but then, you know, the one guy who's controlling the beetle is doing nothing. Yeah, but the moment you push outside, he just, you know, stops controlling the beetle and can fight normally. And it's not that simple, because sometimes there's multiple people around the boss layer, so you can't just push out there because then you get sandwiched. Now you can, of course, argue, well, but the Sparks is making all the sound right now, so he will definitely get snacked by the other players. Yeah. I don't know, but sometimes people don't move. They move the moment one player dies. So, I don't know... ...how I feel about this ping thingy there. And also, it's a little bit of a combination with the level design. Uh, there are a few extractions... ...where you can park that beetle behind trees or boxes or in the crown of a tree and you basically have to leave the hard cover of the boat run behind that beetle cover kill that beetle and then go back to the extraction or to the hard cover of the boat which gives the enemy team an opportunity to shoot you don't know how i feel about that i think everything else is fine like uh, setting off clues or make an extraction warning sound but blocking the extraction that will definitely backfire at one point there are a few for example when you and this is just the one on top of my head without thinking too much you have the one at the lion suns the one northwest of the compound where the boat is like half in the water and half on the land 
and there are trees in that extraction zone or in a tree stump and you can place that beetle behind it and they cannot extract. So they need to guess the beetle is right behind the tree. Toss a choke bomb if they still have some, toss an explosive. I mean, this is crazy. Like blocking the extraction, I'm not a huge fan of that. To be fair, on a test server, we didn't have that much time to play around with it. So this might just be me being <laughs> overly anxious regarding something that is not a big deal at all. Because on the other hand, the beetles die so fast and people will play around with it so much that I would say the beetle population is basically wiped out the moment people start extracting. But you never know. You never know. You can have one Mosenspitzer sniper with his body controlling the beetle and it will be really tough for you to extract. So, I want to talk about another thing really quick. There's probably more pros and cons for the beetle, but that's it for now. This will absolutely break something. Be aware of that. If you add something that has such massive impact on gameplay, and I think the beetle has the potential to do this. Like, the last time they added something with game-changing impact was custom ammo. And I think the beetle is on a similar level. I might be wrong. Who knows? This will break something, okay? This will need patches to fix it. I think the feature is cool. I know there's a lot of people, oh, this is Rainbow Six, no, 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 no. Actually, not completely wrong. Uh, I mean, it's very similar to their scouting drone, but we need to give Crytek feedback so we can make this feature balanced and then have fun with it. Don't be... <sighs> Don't be the annoying uh, Steam community or whatever community that just reads and everything is shit and this doesn't help anybody. They will not get rid of it anymore, okay? But that needs tuning. I'm pretty sure that needs tuning, one way or the other. Okay, I just want to prepare you guys mentally. Go on a test server, try to break it, and then give feedback. And if it's not perfect the moment it goes on live server, I think this is also... Fine. All these implementations of huge impact features, they need the whole player base to get properly tested. If you're testing this with just a couple of people on the internal test servers, or if you try it with, I don't know, on the test servers there's a couple hundred people, this is not the whole hunt population. The whole hunt population will find way more. Okay? So let me know in the comment section below what you think about the Stalker Beetle. What kind of shenanigans you want to try with it. I'm curious. I'm super curious. Alright. And I think the test server, the moment I release this video, should be up. I hope so. So jump on the test server and try the new Stalker Beetle. Have fun. It's been a while since we got something new for Hunt. And this time, we get something that has potential to influence the way we play Hunt by quite a bit. We need to play a few weeks to get a better feeling for it. It's hard to say how balanced this currently is. People who bring a lot of balance to my life can be seen here, my patrons. Guys, I can't thank you enough for the support, it's much appreciated. Thank you for watching. Boy, the comment section will be spicy, right? <laughs> but still looking forward to read the comments. i see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye-bye.